Henry said that it's uh, going units of a larger smoke of not entirely units of small units. <coughs> me, I was in the young units at the time, and there was at least a number. I couldn't say how many, but there was a number of uh, strongly committed pro civil rights young units. And one ended up in the, I think it was the first uh, executive of the civil rights movement, the Robin Cole. Uh, so there were some there who were pro civil rights movement. Most of us, and by the way, we, I almost, on reflection, it was almost like an infiltration. Right wingers, uh, in my case, I mean, I was one of the ones that should have been fighting for civil rights. I came from the Shanker Road, left school at 14. Uh, and, you know, we, we didn't have any more rights than anyone else. But we, the thing I suppose that convinced me in those days, and obviously I've changed my views, uh, I, I sort of against civil rights, but never uh, went out and protested against civil rights because I saw that as a stupid thing that seemed would confirm that there was no civil rights. Uh, the thing was the fact that there were Republicans in the executive and the leadership of the civil rights movement. And this, uh, you know, we, we just saw it as a, as a plot. We were told it because we were fed this information. We saw it as a plot to do, undermine the state. Therefore, we didn't take the demands for civil rights seriously. And I, th I think there actually was potential within the working class Protestant community uh, to, to get through to them. But the fact that the Republicans were there was a big hindrance. And uh, of course, there was all sorts of elements against that. And as far as O'Neill was concerned, my impression was he wanted to go further, but he couldn't go further. And I remember standing in front of him, literally about two yards, a few feet from him, and I condemned him as the man who, who was responsible for bringing Northern Ireland to its knees. Now, that would have been about 68, 69. And there was a small group at the back of the room of about eight or ten people, and they cheered me. One of them was Reverend John Brown, and uh, I think Billy Douglas was there. I think Jim Mullineau might have been there in this small group. I was up on my own. I didn't know these people very well. <laughs> and I was sort of voicing what they were saying. At that stage, most of the, uh, that was the, um, the, the sort of executive, I forget the name, uh, of the Unionist Party, and they were supporting O'Neill. And I think they would gone wherever O'Neill would have taken them. But this group had great potential. And of course, more and more PSLites, because I was getting some of my politics from PSL as well in those days, were coming in with very little real knowledge of what, this, what the struggle was about and uh, undermining, uh, you know, the, the further O'Neill would go, the further the, the, this discontent would rise. But I think what, what, the thing that really gave us some strength was the idea that this was a subversive movement. And I think it's a very, very sad history, and I think it could have been very, very different. A lot of loyalists began to wise up. Uh, towards the end of the, I certainly did towards the end of the 60s and the early 70s, but it was still extremely difficult, and of course the the, the country was almost beyond repair at that stage.